Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be running you through how to set up a, a static website using Azure storage accounts. Now I've already got a basic HTML file right here. Um, all it has is just, you know, a title, a couple of headings, and I've imported the, the Bootstrap CDN for its CSS, so its style sheets for, for Bootstrap. On top of that, I've also got a small index.js file which I've created. And this is just to highlight sort of the limitations of the storage account, and you'll see in a second. Uh, but basically all I'm doing here is just making a call to a public API, which returns back some weather weather data. And then I've also got an alert function here for uh, a button click. So you'll see all that in a second. But first off, let's actually go back to our, uh, Azure, our Azure dashboard and create a storage account for the hosting. So just from here, you can go storage account, I think. And we can just go create. Now we pretty much can leave all the defaults the same. Just make sure you've got an active subscription and just pick whatever resource group you want to assign this to, or you can create a new one just to encapsulate the video in this tutorial. Uh, you can call your storage account whatever you want. So I'll just say my demo site, one, two, three, and pick the region closest to you. And the rest we can basically leave the same. We don't need to worry about any of this stuff here. Access tier is hot, that's fine. And making sure that the endpoints are public for all networks for today's purpose. Anyways, so just review and create, let it validate first. Once that comes back, create it. All right, now that's gonna take a second to deploy. Sweet, so once the deployment is complete, go to your resource and just scroll down. And all we need to do is go to the uh, static website section right here. So I click on that and we'll enable this and the index document name. So this is the entry point for the website and then the error document as well in case there's an error. I'll just save this away. And this is our endpoint to actually access the website. So before we actually go there though, let's just go up to containers and you'll see here it's now generated some two containers for us, so one for the web files and then one for the logs. And we want to just add some stuff to the web container. So we'll just upload here, and I'm just going to select those two files that I already have. So the index.html and the index.js. I'll put them both in, and I'll upload that. So before I actually go to the website now hosted by Azure Storage, I just want to show you something first. So uh, this is the website here running locally for me. So I've got it running on local server at the moment. So I'll just close this off and I'll start it back up again. So this is what the website currently looks like, right? It's just a, a basic header. This is hosted on Azure Storage. The weather in London at the moment is, and then the degrees is captured from the API. And then there's click me alert. Now, so this is all working fine on my PC. It's working locally on this live server. Uh, but now if we actually go to the storage All right, so now if I go back to my endpoint that I have I just copy this over if I just copy this and then paste it in You can see now that the API data isn't being called and that's because Azure storage cannot handle dynamic data So it can only handle static content, right? So all the stuff that we've loaded there is fine for it to use, it can handle that, but as soon as we try to request data from an external web server, uh, it's gonna basically fall over. Uh, so, but this, this function here will still work on the Azure storage. So if I click this, that still works because that's not pulling external information from another web server. Whereas um, the weather data is, so that is just something I wanted to highlight. Otherwise guys, that's pretty much it. It's a pretty quick example. Uh, I guess the use case for this, if you're wondering, would be if you are hosting static stuff, which is basically things that aren't gonna change very often. And that might be things like documentation. Uh, this could be things like a personal resume, personal portfolio, uh, things like that, where you don't need to extract information from other sources, basically. And doing it this way, if you only have static content, is a much more cost-effective way than actually running a full-blown web server. Anyways, guys, I hope this demo was useful to you. If you found it helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss content just like this. Thanks, guys.